In graph form, Kuhn's Hungarian algorithm can be described as follows. We take a complete, weighted, bipartite graph with partite sets x and y, initialize the vertex weights xi equal to the maximum weight of any incident edge and yi to zero, produce an equality graph, the subgraph whose edge weights equal the sum of the incident vertices, find a matching in the equality graph, identify essential vertices, those whose assignment can be changed without affecting the others, reduce the weights of the non-essential vertices, and increase the weights of their neighbors. While this approach works for humans on small graphs, real problems would be done by computer on graphs with thousands of entries. So how could we turn this into an algorithm for a machine? We can store the edge weights in a rating matrix Q, where Qij is the weight of the edge ij. For example, let's find the rating matrix for the graph shown. The first row of the rating matrix corresponds to the proficiencies of employee A on the four tasks. And we observe that employee A performs task 1 with proficiency 9, task 2 with proficiency 7, task 3 with proficiency 9, and task 4 with proficiency 9, giving the first row of our rating matrix. The second row corresponds to the proficiencies of B on the four tasks, and we find, giving the second row of our rating matrix. Similarly, we can find the third and fourth rows. Now once we begin assigning weights, we can record these as row or column labels. To avoid having to say things like the row label corresponding to an essential employee, or the column label corresponding to a vertex in the neighborhood of the non-essential employees, we'll use Kuhn's terminology. In the equality graph, a row is essential if it corresponds to an essential employee, a column is essential if it corresponds to a task done by a non-essential employee. This terminology may seem a little peculiar, so let's explain it. Since an essential employee can switch from one task to another, then any task they're actually assigned to can, in principle, be done later. They can do a different task. So the task they're assigned to is not essential. But since the tasks done by the non-essential employees are going to be done by somebody, then they must be the important tasks. And so that's why the tasks assigned to the non-essential employees are considered the essential tasks. Note that the essential tasks correspond to the vertices adjacent to a non-essential employee. So Kuhn's algorithm can be described as follows. We'll identify the essential rows. We'll identify the essential columns. Decrease the row labels of the non-essential rows and increase the row labels of the essential columns. But again, it helps to remember we're decreasing the weight of the vertices of the non-essential employees and increasing the weight of the vertices of their neighbors. So let's try it out. So we already know the answer to this one because we've solved this in graphical form. Let's solve this in matrix form. We'll initialize by setting the row labels equal to the row maxima. This corresponds to the greatest weight of any edge incident on the employee vertex. And the column labels will be equal to zero. This corresponds to setting the task vertices to weight zero. The equality graph corresponds to the entries that are the sum of their row and column labels. Since the first row has label 9 and all columns are labeled 0, so we look for entries with value 9 in the first row. These will be in the equality graph. Since we'll need them later, we'll cover up the entries that are not in the equality graph.
The second row has label 8 and all columns are labeled 0, so we look for entries with value 8, and likewise for the third and fourth row. Now we'll find a matching. Since we don't need to worry about the weights of the matching, we'll simply select the first available entry, and we'll star it to indicate that it's part of our matching. Notice that the first row is essential, since our star can be on either the first or third column. But the others are non-essential. So we'll decrease the labels of rows 2, 3, and 4, and increase the labels of their corresponding assignments 2 and 4. Then reset and find the new equality graph. Since our column labels are different, we do have to be a little bit more careful in our selection. So in the first row, 9 plus 0 is 9, so this first column, first row entry is in the equality graph. 9 plus 1 is not 7, so the first row, second column entry is excluded. 9 plus 0 is 9, so we include the first row, third column. And 9 plus 1 is not 9, so we exclude first row, fourth column. In the second row, 7 plus 0 isn't 5, so that's not going to be in our equality graph. But the other entries are equal to the sum of the row and column labels, so we include them. And likewise for the third and fourth rows. We'll find the matching. And we see that row 1 is essential, since they can be assigned task 1 or 3. And likewise, row 2 is essential, since they can be assigned task 2 or 3. But rows 3 and 4 are non-essential, and the tasks assigned to them are essential. So we'll decrease the labels of rows 3 and 4, and increase the label of column 4. We'll reset, find the equality graph, find a matching, which is perfect, so it's a maximum weight matching. The stars show the assignments for a matching of greatest weight. Employee 1 to task 1. Employee 2 to task 3, Employee 3 to task 4, and Employee 4 to task 2, giving a total weight of 30. And it's worth comparing to our graphical solution, which is the same.